there, this is Bonnie McCaffrey talking to you from Hawley, Pennsylvania, and I am so glad that you've come back to see another demonstration that I'm going to do. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a little bit about fantasy fabric, and we will be showing you how to make this little fantasy fabric pin, which we have kits for these pins on our website. Now, fantasy fabric is a technique for capturing various things underneath of a layer of sheer fabric. And if you really think about this, this is a very old technique because shadow quilting is about cut, capturing cut fabric under a sheer fabric. Now, fantasy fabric has brought this up into today's world where it's capturing all kinds of things underneath of the layer of tulle, like cut fabric, ribbons, threads, yarns, and like we did last month, we did some tinsel and its um, metallic stars. All kinds of things can be captured underneath of the layer of tulle. You never know where you're going to find things that you can capture underneath of the layer of tulle. In this piece over here, there are there, I found a package of neon colored twine that I laid on the background and then covered with a black layer of tulle and then the layers were stitched together with a smoke uh, colored invisible thread. In the border there, there's little pieces of colored tulle that are also captured underneath of the tulle to create that border fabric and then that fabric was cut and pieced into that quilt. In this quilt over here, this is some cut fabrics, both shears and metallic type fabrics, and um, also some metallic threads are drizzled on that piece as well, and then the layers are covered with a layer of brown tulle, and then stitched together with the invisible thread. But today what we're going to focus on is capturing threads underneath the layer of tulle. So the first thing that we need is we need a base fabric. And if you were doing a piece of fantasy fabric, you would have your fabric laid out on a piece of firm tearaway stabilizer, um, and that helps your stitching look better. But for this, what I'm doing for the pins is that I have a piece of this felt. And this is special felt. It's called Easy Felt because it is stiffened. It's a little bit stiffer. So I start with this layer of felt, and now I'm going to put some threads down on top of it. And I've picked three colors. I'm going to work kind of in a silver version here. And these are some of um, YLI's candlelight threads. And these YLI threads, these candlelight threads, come in a lot of beautiful colors. So I just love them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle some of this thread on the surface here. And I just want to put enough on there that it looks really nice to me. I'm also including in this a little bit of this kaleidoscope thread which is a holographic thread. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to cover it with a layer of tulle. Now the color of the tulle matters because the color of the tulle is going to affect the colors underneath there. Now if we look at this quilt over here, what you'll see is that each color of the tulle affects the colors underneath differently. We have white, yellow, orange, magenta, lavender, blue, green, black. And those are the colors of the tool that are on top of these blocks and you can see that each block looks different depending on the color of tool that's on top of them. Now remember, you could do this with a piece of fabric and over here I have a piece of purple fabric that has some candlelight and a kaleidoscope threads drizzled on it and this would be covered with a layer of tool. And for this you would have to pin the layers together um, because it's a little bit larger piece. Working with this little piece of felt, you won't have to pin the layers together because there's really, it's a pretty small piece. Now what I have to do next is I'm going to stitch the layers together with invisible thread. And the thread that I will be using is this YLI Wonder Invisible Thread. This is the best invisible thread out there. And I've chosen the smoke color because I'm going to be working on a dark background here. And I have that loaded into my machine. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and stitch these layers together. And I have the Bernina BSR foot loaded on here. Which is a great tool if you don't have experience doing free motion stitching because this helps you to get more regular stitches. So the purpose of the stitching is really just to stitch the layers together. And if you didn't have Bernina's BSR foot, you could certainly use your free motion foot or you could use a regular sewing machine foot. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. And there we have a nice piece of fantasy fabric on this easy felt. 
Now the next step is that we need to cut this out. And you could cut this out into any shape that you want. Uh, it could be a rectangle, it could be a square that's turned on point. You could do an unusual shape, a heart, whatever you want to do, you can do that with this. For now, what I'm going to do is I am going to cut it into a rectangle. And I am going to cut this to measure one and a quarter by one and three quarters there. And now we have our rectangle. There is a second piece of felt in the kit and what you're going to do next is you're going to put this uh, cut piece down on top of the second piece of felt. And we're going to be adding a border to this as we stitch this to the second piece of felt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one color of the candlelight. I have this open-toed foot loaded onto my machine. I have also switched to a zigzag foot which I have narrowed down a bit and I have moved the needle all the way to the right there so that I can line the edge of the foot right there with the edge of this little piece of decorated felt. And here I'm going to couch that thread down and when I come to the corner I'm going to try and turn the corner nice and neat. We do want to have that needle down as we turn that corner. And then again, using the edge of that foot so that we got a nice clean edge. And what I'm doing here is I'm stitching down the thread, but I'm also stitching down the um, border cord as I go around there. Now this is going to be the first layer, and really what's going to happen is I'm going to have three layers of this go around. Okay, we're just about back to where we started. Now what I'll do as I go around the second time is I'm going to try and make sure that that thread is inside the first layer so that each time it'll get stitched down just a little bit more. And there we go. Now I'm going to back stitch a little bit just to help secure that in place. And when I cut this, I want to cut just a little bit of a tail on that candlelight thread because this we can thread into a large eyed needle and thread it right in between the layers and we can pop it right out the back there. And that way we have a nice clean start and finish on this. Oh, it's looking good, what do you think? Okay, now we need to cut some kind of border on this. So again, I'm going to use my rotary cutter and ruler, and I am going to cut about a 1 8 inch border. And I'm just lining up that 8 inch line on that line of the border stitching that we just did. There we go, we got nice accurate borders. And just to smooth it off a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to round these corners with just by cutting a little bit of curve to them with a pair of scissors. All right, it's looking good. Okay, there we have, we have the base for the Fantasy Fabric pin. Needs a couple things now to finish it off. We need to put uh, some rhinestones on that. And rhinestones are included in the kit. These are iron-on rhinestones, and they're just really neat things to work with. They have a heat-sensitive glue on the back. So now I have my rhinestones positioned where I want them to be. They have a tool for this. It's called a bejeweler. And that bejeweler is a tool where you can pick up the rhinestone, wait until the glue melts, and then press it into place. And that works very nicely. But what I'm going to do today, I thought I would make it easier because not everybody has the bejeweler and I wanted to show you how you could do this if you didn't have the bejeweler. I'm going to use a tool that a lot of people have. This is the little mini clover mini iron and I'm going to use that to just touch the tip of this onto that rhinestone and hold it until the rhinestone heat, uh, the glue on the back of the rhinestone has melted into place. I'm going to hold it up for about 10 to 15 seconds on the smaller ones, and the larger rhinestones might need a little more, more time. Now, you want to be real careful that this iron doesn't touch the tool, because if it touches the tool, it's going to melt the tool. So let's see if that's in place. Well, there we have our little pin. Well, it's almost a pin, not quite yet. It does need a little bit of a dangle. So included in the kits are a round bead and a dangle bead. And these would then just get stitched right onto the bottom end of this little pin piece. And then you need to go ahead and stitch on the little pin back so that you can now wear it as a pin. And I want to show you another neat little trick. If you wanted to turn this into a necklace instead of a pin, what you can do is you cut two little slits in the back, in the, only the back layer of the felt there. You thread a cord through there, 
tie it in a knot. Make sure it can fit over your head before you do that. Tie it into a knot and then that knot gets hidden underneath of this layer of felt there. So there we have the fantasy fabric pin kits and you can certainly use this technique to make a piece of fantasy fabric by capturing all kinds of beautiful threads underneath of a layer of tulle on a piece of fabric and that fabric could be cut up and pieced, it could be appliqued. you can have lots of fun with this. Please come by our website, bonniemccaffrey.com. We have lots of different colors of the pin kits and remember that you can make them in all different shapes, whatever makes you happy. I thank you for joining me today in today's demonstration and I hope you'll stop back next month and see what else we'll be demoing. Thanks for being with me.